So I'm Cassie, we're here at ATS. I'm picking up my Jeep Wrangler. Um, dropped it off a couple weeks ago to get the transmission rebuilt. Um, they got everything installed, it's ready to go. Um, so we're gonna take it out next weekend on the trails and test it out. So it's a 2010 uh, Jeep Wrangler, it's a sport. Um, so if you know a little bit about Jeeps, um, the 3.8s didn't have great transmissions. So when I bought it used, I had the stock one in it. Um, performed as a stock would, I uh, hadn't really built it up yet. Um, two years ago, the transmission started slipping on an obstacle called the escalator, which is not where you want your transmission to slip. Um, so after that, I found a used one with about 50,000 miles on it. We installed it and it just never worked right. I was losing power, more power than I had lost before. Um, it wasn't shifting correctly. Uh, and we were out at the Rubicon Trail and it just, it gave up on me. So um, it was about to dump a bunch of money into it and was told if I'm gonna get a new transmission, I need to take it to ATS and um, they're the best. They have upgraded parts to it. It's just for the way I've built it and the way I wheel it, it's gonna do a lot better than the stock ever could. Um, so this year is the first year with uh, the new bigger tires, bigger axles, um, just super built up. Uh, this year I've done Carnage for the first time, which was an amazing time. Uh, out at Pritchett Canyon, ran that one again in the new setup uh, during EJS. Um, and then of course the Rubicon Trail was our big trip. Um, we were actually on Ford Ice um, to try and run that one again because two years ago we had a different issue in another Jeep. Um, so those are kind of the bigger trails that I've ran so far this year. Hey crew, I'm Clint with ATS Diesel and we just got Cassie's Jeep done. She's got a 2010 Jeep with a 3.8 in it. So um, anyway, you know, like I said, we just got your training in, so we'll go take it for a test drive. But one of the unique features about this particular transmission is we've restalled the converter so it matches the engine for this type of application for four-wheeling. Um, it's a much heavier duty application, of course, big heavy duty torque converter clutch, which, you know, can always be upgraded on any transmission. Then the valve body is completely recalibrated to give it much more cooler flow, so it runs cooler, and more importantly, it runs with more cooler flow, so it means it lubricates the gear sets. Okay. And then we put a huge pump in it that gives us the ability to clamp the clutches and give more cooler flow because it's a higher volume pump um, along all the heavy duty parts in the transmission. And then last, which is the coolest part, is you'll see a box inside the vehicle that's called our co-pilot. And, and it's adjustable box that actually takes control of the transmission. So when you're under a heavy load, like you got 40 inch tires, you know, in a, or a supercharged motor, in this case, I know it's normally aspirated, but anytime you start turning power way up or you put bigger tires on it or add weight, mm -hmm. and I think it makes the transmission become basically the fuse. So the co-pilot gives the transmission the ability to go much higher line pressure. So we have more clamping force on the clutches, more lubrication. And then of course, gets rid of the modulation on the converter clutch so it doesn't slide in, so it actually goes in fully. So what it gives you is um, kind of a full, heavy duty, high performance transmission that's mated for your engine transmission uh, vehicle combination. And then it also acts as a diagnostic device. So it looks at the sensors in the transmission and if you ever have an issue where one's going out, it will start flashing at you and it'll okay. tell you that you have a transmission issue prior to it actually failing, nice. if you have a broken wire or a sensor or whatever. Um, so you can kind of get ahead of that stuff before it creates a problem. Awesome. So the whole goal is reliability. And on the trail, you know, we don't want to yeah. see you be in a position that you have been with previous transmissions. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah. Cool. So um, we should just take it for a drive. Okay. And I'll uh, kind of show you what it's like and give me some feedback. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. It doesn't even feel like a three anymore. There's so much yeah. power. We're sure, like I would have been back there with that semi. We're just going at the same <laughs> speed. It's funny the difference. It's amazing how much an automatic transmission and torque converter can eat up in power. You don't really realize it until you start putting it to the ground. I can't wait to go by 70. See how it handles. Yeah, and as you're driving, when you roll into it, you'll see the co-pilot start to oh, okay. add its input on all of it these things slip a lot it's it's amazing how much the and part of it is by design you know the manufacturer they're really only designed for stock power mm -hmm. you know stock gears or stock tire size right so they only need so much apply pressure and if they start ramping them up then people generally would complain so they just don't put a lot into them so there's a there's a lot for improvement you know a lot of things that have to be fixed but just the overall drivability of having the stator and the impellent and uh, turbine, the way it multiplies torque and puts power to the ground is, um, 
you know, pretty pretty impressive how much more power you can actually get to the front of the tranny and not just lose it inside the torque converter. Yeah. And of course that equates to less heat, you know, when you think about it in very basic terms, if you have X number of units of energy coming from the engine and it's being converted inside the torque converter to power to the input shaft, the more slippage you have, the more heat you have. So if you convert that fluid inertia from the impeller of the turbine to power that goes through it instead of being turned into heat, you know, you basically, your trade-off is, you know, you have less heat generation, you have more power transfer which is kind of what exactly what your initial experience was. Yeah, no, I mean, you can feel the power. It's like I have my old Jeep back again, but better. <laughs> it's like it doesn't have 40s now. Yeah, right? <laughs> I can pass people, I don't have to wait for them. It's amazing what you get used to when the yeah. stuff starts to fail. Which was hard, because I'm a total like speed demon, so in this you can't be it, but with like no power, it's like, oh, and I have to wait for them. And <laughs> you jump on a little bit, you'll watch the uh, the uh, green light come on when you start to... There it is. So, it comes on when the transmission is fully engaged? Yeah, when the transmission basically gets to its point where it's... it's uh, when it becomes, when it hits the limitation of the factory control, okay. the factory, because the factory TCM, the transmission is fully electronic, which means that all the upshifts, all the downshifts, the torque converter clutch supply and the line pressure is controlled based on the factory TCM programming. Well, aftermarket programming doesn't really give the ability to remap the files like you should, so mm -hmm. the co-pilot, we get between the TCM and the transmission and we monitor the actual engine load. So as engine load gets up to the point that it's going to overcome what the factory TCM control is, then the co-pilot takes control and we take over the tranny. Okay. So as the tranny would max out, get about 90 PSI line pressure, we actually take line pressure up to about 135 PSI, okay. which gives it just that much more clamping force. And it only does it under power. So you don't have the added load um, or drag or anything of the higher pressure. So that's the nice, that's one of the just really nice attributes of the co-pilot is we can do a lot of things with an external box mm -hmm. that you can't do with factory um, TCM programming or aftermarket programming. So when I'm going all the way up by 70, I should see that come on a lot? Yeah, okay. yeah, when you start, yeah, as you start getting to have your load conditions, you'll see that kind of flicker and come on. And, awesome. You know, and then of course the all the blue lights when they come over, that's telling you what the actual line pressure is. Yeah. So, you know, the farther to the left, the higher it is. And then you'll feel like the torque converter clutch, instead of it engaging and disengaging and kind of slipping, oh, you're going to go left here. Left, see, instead of kind of engaging and disengaging um, under power, as soon as the factory TCM begins to modulate the converter clutch on, then the co-pilot takes over and just turns it on. So it basically is equivalent to having a dimmer switch on your wheel instead of, or on your wall. Instead of dimming lights, as soon as you start to dim, you just flip the switch on. So it just turns that clutch on so it doesn't have slippage. The factory is big believers in uh, partial apply, uh -huh. which is great for stock applications because you don't really feel any shifts, but it's terrible for any aftermarket modifications. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of weight, oversized tires, um, modified engine, or the worst case is a combination of all three of them. If you try doing that with that so without, what I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you try applying that clutch with um, all those aftermarket pieces, then it's just constantly slipping. You know, it just it just melts the trainings. Yeah, I I can tell a huge difference. Thank you so much. Awesome, pleasure.